So, right now I'm getting my phone out for the last time. And... For a long time now I've had this thought at the back of my mind, especially when I'm planning some new adventures. Is it really necessary that I bring along my phone on this one? Am I really so dependent on this little tool that I cannot go on any adventures without it? Well, there's really no doubt that phones have totally changed the way how we travel. Navigation, for example, has become so very easy with phones. With phones, we can always check exactly where we are, which route we have to take, or where the closest train station or the closest supermarket is. Back there, I accidentally took a, a big time wrong turn into the wrong valley. We don't even have to give up communication with our friends and our family. We can just contact them whenever we like. And with social media, we can even always check what everyone's up to at the moment. If we want to find out if it's going to rain tomorrow, we just pull up the weather app. If we want to find out something about the place we find ourselves in, we ask Google. Or if we want to listen to some music, we just open Spotify. So yeah, I can only imagine what travel must have been like before phones. But after all, that's what I'm here to figure out. I'm really grateful to be here. No, I'm not entirely new to this whole thing, as a couple years ago in the mountains of New Zealand, I've already done a hike for eight days without a phone and actually without seeing any other humans. Uh, but over there, navigation wasn't a problem at all because I had just had to follow one single trail. Now, traveling through the densely populated Middle Europe with thousands of roads to choose from on the bicycle without a phone, that would be a completely new kind of challenge. And I really didn't know how well it would turn out. But of course, I had to try it. morning. I'm out here by the Lago Maggiore in the southern part of the Alps. Um, yeah, I'm just outside of the city of Locarno in southern Switzerland. It's uh, the Italian part of Switzerland here and plan is to cycle back home to Freiburg where I live and study. Um, to get there I have to get all the way across the Alps through all of Switzerland and then a little portion through the Black Forest and then I'll be home and I'm not gonna use my phone for the whole time I will have my phone with me what I'm gonna do is I will switch my phone off right now and if everything goes well I will switch it on again when I get to Freiburg and not use it at all during that time. I think I will only switch the phone back on again if there's an actual health emergency. I feel like all the problems that are not related to my physical health I should be able to overcome without a phone. There's some really good cycling paths that you can follow here in Switzerland, so I just have to watch out for those signs. And just in case, I wrote down all the city names that I want to pass, all the cities that I want to go through. So in case I lose the cycling path, I can just look at my piece of paper here, check out what's the next city that I have to get to just ask someone by the way I got a bunch of books with me of course so yeah it'll just be me the road the mountains my books and 
yeah, the real life, as you could say. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm excited to see how it will affect me. So, let's get my phone out for the last time. And phone is off. Doesn't feel much different right now. <laughs> Enough talk about the phone. Let's enjoy the journey. Right now, I'm gonna cycle the rest of the Lago Maggiore and head somewhere into those mountains. It's cloudy today, but just very good cycling weather. And I just realized that um, I will not have a clock with me and I will not be able to check the weather. So. <laughs> really, that's gonna be exciting waking up in the tent and not knowing what time it is, not knowing what the weather is gonna be like. Also, as you realize, you're watching a video right now on YouTube, I guess. So that means I'm carrying my GoPro in my hand right now. Um, and the only other electric thing that I have with me is my headlamp. So, yeah. or plantations here so right here you can see the signs that I'm following and so far I've been following the 31 and from now on I'm gonna follow the number three signs and they're really everywhere it's hard to miss the signs To get quickly to Freiburg, um, it's the easiest if I take the, the you know, the quick and big routes. Um, so, oftentimes I'll be sharing the routes with a lot of bigger roads and railway lines. But that's cool. lunch break. There's an actual beach here. A bunch of stuff to explore around here. And by the way, this is how I know how much kilometers I can do in a day or how much more kilometers it is to go. Um, I wrote down the kilometer numbers next to the cities that I'm passing through so although I have no clue what time it is um, but yeah it feels like it's not too late <laughs> and I'm just gonna do about 30 kilometers more like I said and see where I get to Back there I accidentally took a, a big time wrong turn into the wrong valley because I lost the signs. And then I stopped at a bus station because they always have some little maps there. And on the map I saw that I was going into the wrong direction. And 
you leave that little river here is also the Ticino River which flows into the Lago Maggiore <laughs> oh, I guess this is what you call intuition I just saw a little little trail going into leading towards the mountains and thought it looked interesting and really wanted to check it out I just felt like there's got to be something there and <laughs> check this out Wow, <laughs> so happy I made that decision and stopped my bike <laughs> this is wild Well, that was a cool little side adventure I feel like there's still some room left today for some cycling so I will not stay here for the night but yeah great adventure houses of rock built into the rocks over here we see a big concrete fields of industry I don't know what it's for So today came to an end. I'm just gonna camp next to the Ticino River. I'm gonna find a spot right now, somewhere in this forest there. What an awesome day! All right, so I just woke up maybe an hour ago had some breakfast some coffee and yeah it's kind of cool you know waking up without any clock I still don't know what time it is you know I have no appointments or anything so I just wake up when I wake up I get going when I get going um, I feel like I had enough sleep and yeah so it's probably been like 24 hours without a phone now and yeah I can't say that it's that big of a challenge I mean I'm really enjoying myself here yeah but the <laughs> the one thing I guess is the music you know I yesterday I'm just cycling for hours and hours and there's always like a little nagging feeling thought in the back of my head where it's like you know some music with my headphones in my ear would be cool right now even some podcasts or something maybe I love music and I think I gotta learn that you know every moment has its amazing quality so if there's music playing in a certain moment then that's great I, I can enjoy that absolutely enjoy that music but if there's no music at another time then also I gotta learn to just appreciate those moments also you know especially if it's for a long time like I I don't want to crave things I'm really happy to be learning to be more sensible to all kinds of sounds that I don't choose to play in my ears you know, you know like the birds singing right now the cars going on the highway river flowing, the trains choo-chooing, when I go just through cities, you know, people talking, machines humming, all of that stuff's just sounds, you know, and I'm really grateful to be able to hear sounds, 
so whether it's music or anything else so that was my morning talk hope you enjoyed and now I'm gonna hit the road So, right now I am here at the train station in Airolo to get across the Alps. Um, at this time of year in April, you basically have to get through a tunnel, through the mountains. And so yeah, I'm just gonna take the train for one stop. Train goes through the mountain, through a tunnel. And then I'll continue by bike. And it was also no problem getting a ticket without a phone, you know, there's ticket machines, yeah. So here I'll show you what I'm having for lunch. It's um, these crusty little bread pieces with an olive pasta sauce. It tastes just like a little pizza, a little olive pizza and cold and kind of crusty, but it's great. Well, I just rode on the train and came out the other side and it's actually sunny on the other side, whereas on the other one it was totally cloudy, like not a single bit of blue sky. And now it's downhill also. Actually, this train has also brought me from the Italian part of Switzerland into the German part of Switzerland. All the leaves you see in this frame of the video are edible. So that's a lot of greenery there. Good stuff. And even over there from the trees, there's some hazel leaves that I can eat. There's uh, linden tree leaves. Those are actually pretty good. Maple leaves over there. A lot of food all around me here. This is the valley that I came down from up there, from the train station, and it continues towards the north, to the flatter parts of Switzerland. And I'm going up into a side valley of this big valley. I don't know if that's the ge geologically correct term, but yeah. And for the record, I was expecting this whole trip to be slightly rainy weather. and haven't had rain so far. It's sunny now and people on the train told me that it's just gonna be cloudy without rain tomorrow. So yeah, the world is really kind to me right now. <laughs> That was quite the rough uphill with the bike, really steep. Now I've repacked all my stuff that I need for tonight into my backpack here. The hike starts right now. Wow, that looks beautiful. Wow. Still a bunch of houses around. I want to get somewhere up there. So, as all things do, today's adventure has come to an end. 
the trail would go across a bridge right there for some reason the bridge which is kind of just a ladder they put it over there so there's no bridge anymore and there's still a little bit of snow and over there too but you can also see how the snow is melting rapidly it's been really warm today so of course you could try to walk across the snow get to the other side and then up there but yeah like I said it's melting at the moment and it will probably support me but I'm alone right now and if I fall in that river I'm dead you know there's just if I fall in that's it so yeah even if it's just a very slight 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 chance that I'll fall in uh, just not gonna do it and find somewhere else you camp around here it's not like I'm in a bad spot here yeah I'm not sad or anything that I can't continue it's just how things are you know got amazing views right here so what more could I ask All the rocks facing this side are actually still warm. The sun must have been so intense today. Well, not looking too shabby here, eh? Couldn't ask for a better spot. And the waterfalls over here. just been sitting here looking outside for a while so nice and now I'm gonna have some oatmeal for breakfast well I just did some morning exploring <laughs> I thought I had to pack a lot of books and I did but I guess when I'm traveling with my bike and hiking all day, you know, and I'm totally tired from all the activity in the evenings, I can maybe read a few pages and then I'm just too tired. I mean, actually, I'm reading and writing more in the mornings uh, because then I'm not that tired and, you know, I don't have a schedule or anything, so I just take my morning slow. And now I'll get on my way and see what the day has to offer. You see how the snow is melting at the moment and all the grass is still very flat so it just melted away and you can see here there's some tunnels for what I think it's from mice. Maybe if someone knows better you can correct me but Look at that cave up there, it's huge. Oh, and there's another cave. I just done a little bit of grocery shopping and now I'm enjoying this 
insane biking trail. I actually know this area a little bit. I've been hiking here one year ago. And trying to find the same camping spot that me and my friend Riley camped at last year. Here we have got some linden leaves. I really like those because they don't taste like much, like they're not bitter, so you can really eat a bunch of them. And they almost have some like filling qualities, you know? Some free snacks out here. And some of them are really big leaves. Thank you. Treat. Now look at this. I found the spot. I feel like I've already done so much today and seen so much. And the sun is still so high up. Like the day just keeps going and going. Yeah, I must have had breakfast around 7 then or something. Yeah, it's nice just sleeping for as much as the body needs. I mean, humans have lived for thousands of years without alarm clocks. Alright, my GoPro is charging in the sun. I'm <laughs> I made myself a cup of coffee because I didn't have one today in the morning. Real cold. I just have to jump in, and it's also kind of the middle of the trip, so a very good time to, you know, wash myself a little bit, if you can call it that. And now I'll enjoy this evening even more. I even bought myself a beer, which still feels really cold. <laughs> 